and it's back to the stalls for another four months. And so it goes on and on until the sow is worn out and no longer producing a quota of 10 to 12 piglets 2.2 times a year. In all that time, she will never once see a blade of grass or use her snout for rooting. She will not be able to build a nest for her piglets, something she loves to do. And she will never once use her legs to drop anywhere further than to her next crate or stall, or finally, up the ramp, onto the truck that will take her to the abattoir. Many sows develop what is called stereotypical behavior, a seemingly endless repetition of aberrant behavior, such as biting the bars that surround her. Others enter a state of deep depression. I've been inspecting abattoirs for the last 10 years. The thing that's made me saddest about my abattoir work, none of which is pleasant, is that the pigs particularly suffer so much. Being such sensitive and intelligent animals, they tend to have a far greater level of suffering. I had one occasion where I went into an abattoir at tea time. The staff had just gone on tea, and a large old sow who'd probably finished her farrowing days was standing in the stunning room all alone with no other pigs, looking at all this equipment, wondering what was going on and oinking in the most pitiful manner. And I went in and I scratched her in the place where I scratch my own pigs to console them. And she looked up at me and she just rolled over on her back and let me scratch her tummy. And I stayed with her until she was slaughtered. And I went home that night feeling that I couldn't make any difference to the other 200 pigs that were being slaughtered that day, but at least that one passed away in a sort of happy frame of mind. It is the piglets of these sows that become our bacon, ham and ribs. Weaned at five weeks old, they are grown in crowded pens. Their tails are docked in infancy because in the barren confines of these pens there is absolutely nothing else of interest beyond the wiggling tail of the piglet in front. And if tails get chewed upon, infection can set in. At about 130 days old, weighing in at about 85 kilograms live weight, the young pigs are sent to market. And while some pigs will end their days like this, most will land up at markets like this. Traumatized and utterly confused by strange surroundings, Fights break out. And the next we'll see of them is a neatly wrapped packet in the supermarkets. We're in a supermarket parking lot and we're going to go ask some people what they think about kind food. You must treat animals with respect. I'm a great believer in everything that's natural. I do believe that uh, many of the edibles today is contaminated with so much of whatever is in there. I have great misgivings about many of them, to tell you the truth. They must be yes. treated with respect because they are also animals and we like to have animals. Every animal has a right to a decent life. And it doesn't matter if it's a pig, a dog, a cat, a donkey, a chicken or whatever. They all deserve to be treated fairly. And I think every animal has a right to a decent existence. They treated here yeah, on the farm, but uh, I'm not sure because I don't know which farm I'll be treated to right. How do I know that they are being mistreated? We don't ever get to go to a farm and see how the animals are treated. So how would I know? I've only got your word that they are not treated, being treated well. Yes, sister. We are always remain to live. God created everything to live in this world. Yes. Because they actually give us the food and, our, and they actually our livestock and, the, and we get milk from them and we get meat from them. Um, well, I'm going to pose your, your question with another question. Is um, you know, Those animals are rare to, for others, us as human beings to survive. And you know, I, I think that um, if those are the circumstances, it's either or. Is, is the um, pig going to have a happy life or... Is every other human being going to have a happy life? 
I think um, it, it's astonishing that people have no idea at all um, what's happening sort of over the wall. And I think um, if, if pe the, the actual labels with all these beautiful meadows and everything, it should actually say food from hell. It should actually say this product is manufactured in hell. South African doctor, psychiatrist and author Ian McCullen makes an impassioned appeal in his new book, Ecological Intelligence. We have to stop speaking about the earth in need of healing. The earth doesn't need healing. We do. This illness, sometimes referred to as a loss of soul, what I call homesickness, has everything to do with what is known as the human nature split, the way that we have tended to disregard our evolutionary relationship with all living things. What I'm speaking about now has nothing to do with fantasy or philosophy. This is a biological fact. We are connected. DNA evidence shows this. Every mammal, from mice right through to elephants and chimpanzees, has more than 90% of the human genome. To demonstrate the similarity between all mammals, one only has to look at the embryonic development of different creatures, such as pigs, calves, rabbits, and humans. At that early stage of development, it's almost impossible to tell the difference between them. If we are to eat animals, then let it be done with dignity, compassion, and respect. And let's be real about what we say and do. These photographs were taken recently on a so-called free-range farm that supplies supermarkets in the Western Cape. This tractor load of chicken entrails is about to become pig food. Nobody wants the entrails from chicken abattoirs. And let's face it, a farmer can't feed his pigs for much cheaper than this. Our three sows rescued from Claymont have joined a host of other rescued animals at Pat Cavendish O'Neill's legendary sanctuary near Somerset West. They will live out their days in the company of Kalu, a chimpanzee Pat rescued from Central Africa, Domino the Ox, and many others. But for those pigs that remain in the food chain, we urge supermarkets as a matter of urgency to bring on an era of kind food. Something as minimal as straw bedding has made a difference for the piglets on this farm. And the sows can suckle their piglets without the restraint of iron bars. In 2005, Professor Wangari Matai, the first woman in Africa to receive the Nobel Peace Prize, told a packed audience at the University of Cape Town about what had inspired her to plant one million trees across Kenya. I didn't have a plan, but I, I kept going deeper and making the linkages. And the more linkages I made and the greater understanding I had, the more I was pulled in it, into it and the more eventually it became a passion. And I say, when you understand, it becomes your problem. If you do not understand, you can go home and sleep very peacefully. But if you understand, you can't sleep, you wake up, you're worried. So you have to make a choice. All of you who have been here, if you understand, now you have a burden. <laughs> but if you do not understand, well, go home and sleep peacefully. <laughs> but one thing I have come to recognize and to appreciate is that, well, we, can live when we well we cannot live without the other species the other species can live quite happily without us so we really need to understand how dependent we are on the other species so that we can respect them we can protect them we can speak for them because they are our friends in the same way we trust that this documentary has helped create an understanding of the misery and wretchedness of what it is to be a pig. And that, from this understanding, we will be passionately inspired to do all we individually can to ensure that the misery and wretchedness are exchanged for lives 